All right, so uh, this right here is a DEC RLO2. It's from the late 1970s. Uh, it's a 10 megabyte hard disk, removable platters. It was very popular in many of DEC systems. It was used over many years in multiple generations of computers. Um, it was relatively easy to find new drives, or rather new old drives, on the internet since they were so popular for many years. And the issue is I don't have a PDP-11, I don't have a PDP-8, I don't have any of the original systems. I really couldn't afford one. So my thought was, because of all the great documentation that DEC had written, I could, in fact, create a new controller for this drive. So in effect, it turns the RLO2, which was never intended to be used with anything like a modern PC, they didn't exist yet, into a large USB storage device. So, What's here is the hard drive, and this is just like a hard drive in a modern computer, but much larger. You have the drive itself, and then the disk, which is underneath here, spinning at about 2400 RPM. Now, unlike modern hard drives that have integrated drive electronics, um, this is really just a very, very simple set of driving and decoding electronics for the drive itself, and this is all that you got with the drive you would need a controller card to actually do things like seek the drive, um, read data off the drive, decode the data from the disk. And normally you'd use a large card. I actually have one if you wanted to look at it. Um, <clears throat> but the controller card here is kind of a re-implementation of the original design for the controllers. So this is my first prototype. There's an FPGA on board that does all of the data decoding from the disk. It manages the drive state. It sends commands to the drive. It checks on the drive status. It basically makes the drive happy and can give you the data in a format that a modern microcontroller or computer can understand. And that's fed via SPI over to a microcontroller that reads the data from the drive, packages it up, and sends it, and exposes it, rather, over USB mass storage. So, so essentially, taking all of the, the original uh, activities that a controller would need to do, like decode data from the drive, do the data, they called it pre-compensation, moving bits around so that when you encode data on the disk, it's what you would expect it to be. All of the drive state management took all of that and put it on an FPGA. And the FPGA interfaces via SPI to a microcontroller, which then speaks USB mass storage to a PC. So in effect, it is a very large USB thumb drive, large in physical size, not in uh, storage capacity. There, there are some cool side effects to this, which is uh, in the community SimH, which is a PDP-11 and many other old computer system simulator, can actually interact with this drive like it was a large disk image. So by virtue of uh, Linux's everything is a file, I could fire up SimH and attach. Normally you would attach a disk image, but I can attach SimH to this physical hard drive and then boot and figure out, well, what is on this disk pack? And I can just ask RT11. And there's the file listing. And it turns out this disk has forestry survey data from 1985 on it in, I think, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. But this is useful for a lot of people doing vintage computer work because right now, bootstrapping, so setting up an old system, can be a very difficult process if you don't have a lot of computers because you have to find your operating system image you want to use from the internet, you have to transfer it to a, a medium that your computer can talk to an old computer on, so maybe a tape, and then you might have to set up the disk image on the old computer, possibly you might need to use multiple computers. Whereas here, you can take a disk image from the internet, put it onto a physical drive, and then boot up a vintage computer off of the physical drive. It's also useful for restoring or backing up old information. So if you have many disk packs, you can back up all of the data on the packs to a modern computer and if you need to one day restore them to original disk packs. And it's also kind of fun because as a USB thumb drive, you could theoretically put things like FAT16 file system on it or boot DOS or Linux or any of the other fun PC operating systems. So it, it's in effect, it was a learning project. I'd never really done much with FPGAs before and I kind of thought it would be a non-trivial kind of way to put my foot into the water of F the FPGA world and kind of discover a little bit of what they can do, and I, I found it a fantastic learning experience, and I hope that other people find it useful.